Hi everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Whenever you are calling in from, you are watching this recording from. So today we will be looking at the charts to kind of um, just do a little bit of um, training on how to draw out your support and resistant lines, identify structures, um, how to enter trades and exit trades as well. You know, I know a number of you have been in um, some of my trainings when I identified um, different um, um, strategies for entering trades and exiting trades. We have recordings in the library to also give you some, I mean, give you further um, um, clarity. But if you still have any um, concerns, any questions, you can always drop your questions on the platforms. But I want to also still use this um, training tonight to um, um, look at these um, strategies again, just in case there are things that I may have missed, um, that I can capture them in this one as well. So like we know, the first thing that you do on each heart when you begin is to first of all identify your support and resistance levels because these are levels where you will be taking your trades from these are levels where you will be exiting your trades from and you know how we do it we start from the higher time frame to kind of have a, a global picture best high view high view of where price is art and where price is going to then that would determine how we trade it and um, uh, that way we we drive down we drop down to the smaller time frames to be able to enter our trades. So I'm just going to start with, um, let me pick up a pair here, probably start with um, the known one, the one that is readily traded all over the world, Euro USD. It's one of the cheapest ones that everyone trades. So when you start out, the first thing you must do is to identify your support and your resistance and you know that these things appear in different, um, you know, prices fractal, you know, meaning that what you see in the higher time frames, you'll see them in the lower time frames. So, but it's better for you to first of all look at it from the higher time frame. So, I usually start on the weekly. Now, if you come on, if you look at this right now, you already see where price has got into the highest points that price had got into and the lowest point that price had got into. You know, and where price is at at this point in time. So first of all, uh, initially I used to like to use um, the uh, line charts. I, I still use line charts when I don't find um, I, I don't find um, uh, when it's all messy, so messy. You know, I still use line charts to kind of um, capture um, my support and resistance lines because line charts pretty much just gives you where price the price bodies are it just takes away the noise of the weeks you know it takes away the uh, the uh, the weeks which has noise and everything uh, just a moment please um. <laughs> I just saw a spider, a spider in my office. I needed to just get rid of it before my wife sees it and then screams. <laughs> okay, so um, so yeah, for this one, I think I'm pretty comfortable. But uh, what one of the things I also want to mention is that the weeks are equally as important as the body, because sometimes, most times, price get to the weeks. You know, not just the body. You know, you also have to ensure that you capture the weeks, especially when you're drawing trend lines. Capture your weeks. Because they would, they also capture areas where price can get to. So it may not, price may not just turn at the body. It may get to the weeks as well. So what I like to do is to look at the highest point that price is at, at gotten to, and then look at the lowest point. I know that because this is still far away, it uh, may not really um, give this area much interest. My interest will really lie within this area. So I'm going to capture this as well. 
you can see. And the ideology for capturing it like this is to is that price got to that level in the previous days, in the previous years, you know, in the previous weeks, then it means that price will definitely get to that level in the future. So where has price got into, where will it get to? That's the whole essence of um, the whole um, um, mindset we, behind capturing your support and resistance the way we do. So we see that price had a reaction here, had had a reaction, had had a reaction previously here. We look left as well. You see something happen there. See something happen here. See reaction here. Go back to the past. You see reactions. So that's to tell us that price, that area that we're looking at is a, is a um, an important area for price. Now, remember what I always say, it's not much an a line, you know, per se, um, support and resistance are more of zones, levels than lines, because your supports, your support, this level, 1.15600 may not be what other people might see. They could decide to pick their one from here, somewhere around here, and they could still be right, meaning, uh, let me put that, that's the bottom of this candle here, you know, the week, this week, that could be their own support, you know, so you need to capture support as a level as opposed to capturing it as a line. That's why we tend to do this when we, when you see some of my charts, they will have something like this, you know, meaning that when price gets to that level, there would be a reaction, you know, so I do that and I do this because this is where price is at. I capture all of that, you know. Then you can see this as well. Why? Because price got there. Yep. And now there's something that we understand that um, um, that price does. Price action structure. Now this is what it does. When price breaks support, usually it comes back to retest it to become resistance and then drop. Or when it breaks resistance, usually it comes back to retest that resistance and then becomes support and then jumps. What do I mean? Now look at this. Price was coming all the way from down here, right? You know, it was going, it came from here, dropped here, and then jumped. It was going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. You know, what happened? It broke this level. And then what did you see it do? Came up and retested that level that it broke out from. You know, retested it. This became support initially. I mean, resistance. Because why did we call it resistance? Because it got here, rejected, got here, fell, then in, uh, eventually got here, broke it, and came back. So this was initially resistance, and resistance became support. When price comes down to a level, it is support. When it when it's on going to a level, it is resistance. You know, the roof or the floor, whichever way you want to look at it. So when it breaks this resistance, it becomes support. That's price action right there. It becomes support. And what you normally would want to do is to buy at this point because you anticipate that price is going to jump every time it breaks support, I mean, breaks a level and retest it, it's going to jump bounce off that level. So that's what um, structure and price action is all about. So you put your, you start to look for an entry opportunity in this area. So that's that's just um, a brief um, a brief price action structure um, understanding. I just thought I'd throw that out there. So so look at that. Found my support, my resistance. Found another resistance here. Found my support. So what I can do now is to um, bring this down to drop this down to my smaller time frame now because this the weekly, the monthly is not my trading time frame. You know, they are not my trading time frame. They are just the time frame that we use to, you know, to draw out the charts, you know, just to see a global picture, better view of what's happening in the market. So I can now bring this down to the smaller time frame. One of the um, reasons why you bring it down to the smaller time frame is to also capture some other support and resistance levels that may, um, that may exist, you know. Uh, let me take this out some other support and resistance levels that may exist. Yeah, so um, looking at this right now, I can clearly see a level here. You know, I can clearly see a level here. See what, oh, see that? See what price did right there. It came, it broke that, it 
broke that and although it didn't really go back to retail, so it just kind of had a pullback and then dropped. Broke this one, what did it do? It came back and retested. So uh, we might be anticipating price to drop. Sometimes it may drop, sometimes it may come back, break it again and go back up. But every time price breaks a particular structure, a particular level, it becomes um, the opposite. If it was a resistance before, it becomes um, support. So always have that at the back of your mind every time you, you trade. So first of all, it's, it's a strategy. First of all, identify support and resistance, your key levels in the market. When that those levels have been identified, drop down to your smaller time frame and then look for price action, look for structure, how price broke level and then came back to retest that level. Because normally it comes back, retest that level, then drops comes back, retest that level, then jumps. So that is what price does in the market. It's it's um uh, it's always very accurate. Well, let me not say always. It's, let me just say it's um it's a known it's a known rule. You know, sometimes it fails. You know, not thinking forex is hundred percent accurate, but it's a known rule. It's something that everybody knows in the market. Every time price comes in and tests a particular level, breaks a particular level, it comes back and retests it. Now, another element in the market is this concept of ranging or uh, channel. When price is uh, trading up and down, up and down, it's not really making um, higher highs or lower lows like um, Adrian taught, um, showed you the other day. You know, it's not, it's not, there's no clear highs or clear lows. It's just it, in its small, in a small range. You know, then that's something you break out to. Sorry. You know, it's in a small range like this. That offer also offers a good opportunity to trade as well. I love breakouts as well. So this is something to look for, look out for. Some people, when price is doing this, they don't trade the market. They just let it do its thing. It is when price breaks out of that level that they start looking for an entry opportunity. So now, let's say I was trading this. I was going to trade this, um, for instance. I could drop down to my other time frames to kind of just see if I have other levels I can trade. You know, so now look at what happened right here. You know, my smaller time frame. Price came back, came um came down, tested, couldn't break it, bounced off it, and then the next thing it did, came back down, broke it, retested, and what did you see? A drop. Yep. So you would have made yourself how many pips if you traded this at this as hundred plus pips and put and your stop loss probably would have been somewhere around here. Your previous high should have been this one, either this one or the the one before it as this one. If you wanted to be extra um, extra careful, you know, extra generous. So it would have made a uh, hundred plus pips just um, trading this price came back, retested and dropped. Although it came back and retested it again, but you would have wouldn't have touched your stop loss here or here, you know. Then so dropped hundred pips and what did it do? Um, came back and retested it again. What did you see it do? Dropped even further, you know. And then what what did you see it do? It pulled back and then kept going, dropping. The pulled back, kept going, pulled back, dropped, and then it came down to that level that you identified in your on on your higher time frame, and then because that's the same level, if you look left, that price jumps, comes in, and then jumps. So that tells you that when price comes back to that level, it may jump because it happens to be a strong level. You know, price broke it initially, and every time it came back to it, it bounced. You know, so came to it, bounced. So that's to tell you that if it comes back to it, it may bounce. So that's something that you would want to look at. Okay, I think it's going to bounce. So you probably want to put, look for an entry opportunity here for a buy. You know, but let's say it doesn't, you, you enter, you, you enter the trade and it doesn't eventually buy. You have your stop loss to protect you. But then again, before you even enter as a buy, you would have gotten a confirmation, maybe an bearish and go off in can do. Um, uh, um, a triangle flag or what have you before you enter this as a buy. You wouldn't just jump in because price got there because it might break. So you only look for an entry confirmation before taking that trade. So let's say we were taking this, you know, that came down and bounced 
here so now what are we waiting for we we are waiting for this to go here break it and we test and jump up but it hasn't done that yet it got to that level and bounced again so if you were going to take this probably will have looked for another entry opportunity what would have been your um your confirmation to enter this street you guessed it this can do right here yep that's your entry opportunity right there that's your um engulfing can do and what do we mean by engulfing can do engulfing can do is a can do that um engulfs completely the body of the previous can do i like to see it i like to see that can do let's say i'm trying to treat a cell i like to see the previous can do being a green can do you know, I wouldn't want to call a candle an engulfing if the previous was a, a red as well, a bearish engulfing if the previous was a red candle as well. I'd, my confirmation is always the previous candle has to be a green candle. And this, the next candle has to completely engulf the body. So it doesn't necessarily mean that this has to be the longer can do. It has to be larger than everything. It has to engulf the top. As long as it engulfs the close of that, um, um, the body, the, or say the opening of that previous can do, it is good enough for me. So this is an example of a, an engulfing can do. This is an example of an engulfing can do. Why? Because it completely engulfs this previous can do. The same thing with this one. Yep, the same thing with this guy. Yep, so if I was to enter this street right here, I saw that move, I jumped in. That would have been how much if I entered it? Yeah, 80 pips, 81 pips move. And I decided, okay, um, while this was forming, I saw another opportunity to enter the trade, another engulfing can do. How many pips would that have made? Not very much, but then pips are the same. Yep. 49.50 pips. Yep. So that's how you, how, what would have been your confirmation for taking this trade? Again, that's one entry opportunity. If you look at it holistically, you can see something forming. I, uh, let me see if I can take this to, up on there. to work for me. Okay. I don't know how many of you, um, I know a lot of you already know what head and shoulder looks like. So this would have been a good um, opportunity to look for an, a head and shoulder move, you know, as well, you know, playing out. I see that, um, well, call it a reverse head and shoulder. We can see that um, this can be the head, the full head. See that this can be like the, um, this can be like the neck. So what are we waiting for? Maybe another neck to form here. So if you want to trade this, this could have been an opportunity for you to look for a head and shoulder move. So if I was to take this, I think I probably will have done this like this. Sorry, my uh, mouse sometimes just messes up. Okay. Okay, I got it. So that, then uh, probably we're waiting for something like this just to happen again. And then maybe this. And then I can now look for my, all of this, you can trade all of this. You don't need to wait to, for the um, head and shoulder. Initially, we used to wait for the head and shoulder, but I think with your confirmation, you can trade anything. You don't have to wait for the full head and shoulder to form before you take a trade. With confirmation, you can trade anything. In fact, that's how we won our, our, um, our AJ trade. So which what would be your target? Target normally would be the distance between that neck to the head, which would be, yep, it would be almost, almost yeah. Think. That's accurate. Let's take the whole of that. And see, get a few more pips. Uh, yeah. Yep. So it will be the distance between here and here. So if all things remain equal, this is my target right there. 
it goes all the way back into the zone that it was before. You know, every time it got to that zone, what did you see it do? It had a reaction drop, 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 and then finally. So it is to be expected that this would go all the way back into that zone. And maybe from there, you can look for another entry. Remember, you, this is how you enter a head and shoulder move. Let it break out, let it retest that zone that it broke out from, and then that's your, that's your move right there to that zone. You can take part profits as you go. Look for entries and exit opportunities. You know, all of these are entry opportunities. We have price turns, all of these things, these moves. They're all entry and exit opportunities because every time price get there price is definitely going to have some form of reactions so that's what you should be looking for some of them may be 50 pips some of them may be 20 pips so but they would turn they would have have reactions every time price get there so those who serve as your entry opportunities and your exit opportunities just so that you can compound your your positions you don't just throw in the standard lot size from here you throw them in you know, you throw it, it throw in your volumes little by little, start from 0 0.1 and then work your way up to your standard. Now, if I was going to take this trade, what I need to do, I need to wait to properly see this guy break out, you know, break out of this um, zone. It needs to break out. I need to see um, it go up either. Because normally, like I said, remember what I said, it has to break out and retest. I might, it may break out. Then, excuse me, retest that zone. Then I can take my buy if with the confirmation, um, obviously, to that level. Then I can decide to look for another entry opportunity, which is going to take me down. That is, if it doesn't break above that entry opportunity to bring me down here, which would be an engulfing, a can, um, a bear, a bearish engulfing, a flag, a pennant, what, what have you, will trade you back to that level. Already you know what you're looking for. You're looking for a head and shoulder, but you're just looking for entry opportunities to just either milk the market before that head and shoulder finally forms. You know, so that will be your trade for um, if you wanted to do that um, head and shoulder um, trade. Now, something else that I wanted to share. Let me come to my one hour time frame. Um, okay. So let's assume this is a move. Let me delete this to make this thing much more easy to read to see where this is going to go. Okay, come on. Okay. Okay, it was selected. All right. Okay, let's say I wanted to trade this move right there. Where is it? Okay, uh, where are you now? Okay, it's difficult to see without it. Okay, let me do that again. Okay, so an example, I enter this street. It's too small. So a trading view still remains one of the best um, tools. So let's assume I enter this trade somewhere around here. I saw the move, I saw it coming, and I entered somewhere around here. This is how you compound, you load your positions. So maybe this was my, you know, probably triple top, you know, was what I saw and I decided to enter the move. So what would be my confirmation for taking this trade? Confirmation for taking this trade. This came in, tested this. My confirmation for taking this trade, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, would be this can do. This one right here. See? That it would be this can do. Why? That's a bearish engulfing can do. And then where would be my stop loss? A few pips above this level. Why? Because that's the highest point that price got to. You know, so I have to put my stop loss a few pips above that. Now, I enter on this move. Uh, some people like to enter on this move. Some people, when they see that bearish and golfing, they anticipate price to do a pullback before drop, finally dropping. So if you were to enter on this one, not bad. You enter immediately. You see this kind of close. You know, if you were to wait to see a pullback, 
you know, you probably ends out on the pullback. But whatever case, whatever be your own confirmation, if you enter uh, um, with this one, then this would be your entry. Let's assume you entered. And then price came down here. When price came to that level and began to turn back, that would be where you draw your first line. Because that's going to be like your support. You know, that would be your support where price got to and turned. So every time price came in to that level, came in to break that level, that's an opportunity for you. you so what you're looking for now is for another opportunity to enter the market. So you wait for it, let it trade, let it trade. If it gets to a level and pauses and then starts turning, that's another line for you to draw. Draw another line there. Because that's another entry opportunity for you. And even another exit opportunity for you as well, depending on what you're looking for in the market. Um, I have my not grabbing come on oh that's come on okay i'm just gonna reduce it okay so um yeah there we go okay so yeah price got here i didn't had a reaction broke it and what am I looking for? I'm waiting for price to come back and retest that level where it got to. That's why I drew that line. Remember what I talked about price action. Break of support, come back and retest and drop. Or break of resistance, come back and retest and drop. So the reason why I'm drawing that line is because I want price to come back. I'm waiting for price to come back and retest it. Once it retests it, this is my entry. I enter my trade from here. This will be where I will take my, uh, my entry at. Because I know that price will came, come back and retest the level where um, it um, it broke out of before. You know, remember what we talked about lower lows and lower highs and all of that. That comes into play. So it, it, it makes this low, um, this low, then it makes this lower low, and it keep it would keep making lower lows until it gets to where it turns to now start making um, highs and higher highs and what have you. So every time it creates a low here, I put a, a line across it wait for price to come back into it remember again it's not pretty it's it's more a zone than a line remember so it may not necessarily come back and come back to that level it may go fall short of it or even go above it like this one did yep so but then that zone when price comes into that zone i would look for taking my own trade another position so when that happened i took another position when price got to that level you know, where, wherever price turned back would be another line opportunity for me. I put that line there. If you notice what happened, price kept trading within that zone, came back and retested it, never broke above it. And then what happened, it broke that line. I let I let my position run, let it don't run, let it run. What happened again? Price got to this level, drew another opportunity for me. Then I put that line there. I don't know if you're catching, guys are catching this. It's really sweet if you use this strategy. You don't. Um, you can make you know a thousand plus just trading one pair, pair. You know because all you're doing is just increasing. You're just increasing. So price got here and then pulled back. But unfortunately, it didn't go all the way back up here. Not a problem. Uh, nobody told me it was going to be. 100% is going to always come back to that level. Remember what I said earlier, it won't always, uh, um, um, the rule won't always play, play out accurately, but it's the rule that everybody knows. So it, but it pulled back, why? Because at least I can see two green candles here, which is one of my confirmations for a, a pullback, you know, two candles to the, to the right, as I can see. So it's fine. I'm perfectly fine with it. I can draw my line and then wait for price to break it and then, when it breaks it, I would wait for price to come back and retest it. I may have missed this. I didn't see, I didn't get an entry. Why? Because this didn't come to this level. So I didn't have any reason to enter this street. I let it go. You see the difference? I don't just take it because I see a pullback jumping. No, I wait for price to come here. But since price never got to this level, I'll just watch and let it do its thing. Don't forget, I'm still in the trade. I'm still here. What did price do? It came back and broke it. Ah, oh, fantastic. I let it go. I let it run. And then what did it do? It created a low. I'm super elated about that. I put my line there. 
you know, put my line there and wait for price. What did price do? Came back to my level. Sweet, isn't it? Came back to that level I created for it. Uh, come here. Came back to that level. Kind of drew a little weak to the upside, but I wasn't bothered, you know, because my stop loss will probably be somewhere around here, you know. So this is my entry. Yep, my entry there. I let it run, I let it run, I let it run. It came down, kind of went back up, but it didn't break my my high, so I'm, I'm still good. It came down, and what did you see it do? Create another low, fantastic. I put my, my line there as well, anticipate price to come back to that level. What am I doing here? I'm waiting, looking for an entry. The price, price pretty much didn't come into. Um, if I, if I was, you know, not if the way I trade sometimes, I like to, I, I summarize. I don't necessarily need to wait for price to come down to that line. If it is at, at least two pips or three pips away, I can take the trade. This is three pips. It's fine. I can jump in. That's something else. That's my own personal thing. I don't have to wait for price to come in like it did here. Sometimes I can enter the trade at this point. It's two, three pips away. I, two, three pips drop down won't kill me. Now would it? So I do that to myself. But this is too far away. I can't enter from here because it's about um, up to five, six pips or even more. Yes, way, way more. So I wouldn't even take this one. Yep. But this is fine. It's closer to that level. As long as it's close to it, two, three pips, I can jump in early trade. You know, so if I jumped in, that would have been a winner for me as well. Because what happened, price came down and dropped to this level before another reaction happens. So again, I have my low there. I have my low there. What am I looking for? I'm waiting for price to come down and break that level and then, you know, go up. Oops, come down. Okay. So I had, I had that at my level here. So what was I waiting for? I wanted price to break, price to break that level and come back to this level. Price kind of broke it, but what did it do? It broke, it came down, and for some reason was struggling around here. Then I start being wary, what's happening? Price broke out, came back to this level, then broke down. It didn't, um, it created a low here. Okay, I'm, I'm super okay with it. Well, I'm not, um, it's not entirely what I wanted, but it's not bad. Uh, but what did it, okay, yeah, sorry, I forgot this one. It broke, came down, then got back to this level. It's still sweet, still sweet, still looks good. I'm still in the trade. Still looks good, came back to that level and that it nicely. What did it do? It then dropped. Dropped and um, to this level, but never broke it. Never created more selling opportunity, what did I see it do? I see it go back to that previous level, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm watching, by this time I pulled my stop loss down here. You know, every one of the trades, I know that this one is still fresh, but it's fine even though um, this is still fresh, very much fresh because this is where I just entered um, last. You know, it's all good. Uh, right now, this trade is a winner. This trade is a winner, this trade is a winner. This trade, this way, I didn't enter this one. This is a winner. So I still have trades in there. What do I do? I watch, you know, I have my stop loss locked down. And then I keep, I let it go. And let's see what happens. What the price do? Sure enough, uh, broke my levels. Broke my level. So I'm excited. I'm still in the trade. Yep. Broke my level. I'm still in the trade. And uh, what did it do? It came back, but um, broke my level. It came back to that level. Excuse me. Came back to that level. I feel I have another trading opportunity. Then I jump in the trade. Okay. Uh, I, 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 this is where I am. It broke my level and then came back to it, and I jumped in because this is the rule. The rule says you jump in every time it got back to that. I mean, gets back. Um, price comes back to that level. And what did you notice? Price came back and. Whoosh, jumped up massively. This got me scared. You know, now I'm worried. I don't know what's happening. But I have my stop loss locked down. 
you know, somewhere here. So it's not, it hasn't hit yet. So I'm still, this is a losing trade because I'm already negative. This is a negative as well. It's all good, but this is still winning. So I let it go and let's see what happened. And then what would you see? Price massively drops. Yep. Still a winner. Still a winner. And then where did it drop to? All the way down to that zone. You know, so when price gets back to this zone, I'm beginning to think, okay, I think price is going to reverse now. I have to start. Now, I have this low that has been created. I'm not, um, I'm super excited because there's a lot of, I've already won so much here. You know, so I put that there. But because it's it's in this level, it's in this level, I'm watching now because I know that this is that level that price used to come in and turn at. So I'm watchful. I have that low there just in case price comes back and retest it. My stop loss is locked in somewhere around here. So all of this trade is a winning trade. You know, so I just watch what is happening and then what, what happened. Price came back to it. Came back to it. I wouldn't enter this trade. Why? Because it's at that level. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for price to totally break out of that level. This is what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for price to break out because that is at it is at a key support zone. I'm not looking for any trades here. At this level, I am not looking for any trade. I want price to break out of it. You know, at best, what I'm looking for is for price to reverse at this level. You know, so right now I'm sitting on my hands just to see what's happening. Price came back. Um, this is probably where my uh, this is my winning trade. I have all of this as a winning trade. But if price comes back into that level, it means it's minus. So I could begin to either secure my bag here, yeah, probably leave the very first one or the very uh, or the or the two, if I feel that I still have opportunity to, you know, to keep trading or I close out all my positions, which is normally what I do. I close out all my positions and wait and see what price does. So if it keeps going up, if it decides to start going up, I can look for um, a trading opportunity to the upside. If it breaks my low here, then I look for another selling opportunity. What is price to do? I keep these lines here because they will tell me, they will help me um, know if price is going to reverse or not. You know, because every time price, if it gets back into these levels, I'm, I should start seeing buys. So right now, what, watching what's happening, at my line on out just to see if price is going to go back there and drop. But I'm not looking for any trades here until price breaks out. What I'm really looking for is an opportunity to start buying the market right now. So this is the last previous um, low. In fact, this was the previous low that price made. Let me bring this. Let me create another one. This was the previous low that price made. Um, messy lose, I would say. You know. So all of this, to be honest, really. So just keep that active. So this is the area I have to start looking. If it breaks above that, I should start looking for a buy opportunity just to trade it to the upside. So right now I'm watching what's happening. What's happening? Price is still trading within that zone. It's all good. I can still um, draw my lines. Just keep the line going. So what's happening? Price eventually broke that level. Yay. <laughs> An opportunity. It broke that level. The selling continues. Yeah. Now, what I need to know right now is, is it going to come back into that level? Because remember what it says, it needs to break a zone, a particular stroke, um, what's it called now, a particular um, support. And then I need to look for an entry. Uh, how am I going to find that entry when price comes back to that level? So what am I looking for now? I'm waiting for this price to come back to that level. Then I can look for a sell. So what did price do? Created a low here. Okay. Good, good. I think I might, it might be onto something. So I put my line there. I'm trying not to let us see the future price so we can work this um, as if we're back testing. Uh, so I have that there. So I'm waiting for price to come back. I'm waiting for this price to come back into this level. Then I can look for another uh, opportunity, selling opportunity. Remember, I'm not entering any trade yet. I need to see this price come back into this level before I look for an entry opportunity. So let's keep going. Um, the price come close. It came so close. Let me see how many pips. Oh, 26. Ah, oh, that's a lot. 
if I was bold enough to take that, maybe I would have won, but I wouldn't have taken it because the distance is too wide. 26 is too much. You know, just let it go. Then price came down. Yep, yeah, broke my broke my level. So let's see what's happening. Created another low for me. In fact, this price, this thing never didn't give me good entry opportunities. So I didn't force it. I just let it do its thing. So it created another low and then jumped again and then came down again and broke that. But every time price did that, I draw a line. I make sure I always have a line there because those will serve as entry opportunities for me. And then what did price do? Created another low. You know, it's really choppy. It's not really the movements are not really encouraging because candles are too small. So, yep, what did price do again? It jumped up. Did it jump back? It jumped back to that level. So I can start looking for an entry opportunity here, if you will. So I can look for an entry opportunity. Let's see if I entered. Okay, I would have entered this trade anyway. And if I enter that trade, okay, I think, yeah, okay, maybe I would have entered this trade. I'm just seeing this now. That low was created and then price jumped up. You know, and do the stop loss, it wouldn't have hit my stop loss. I would have probably have put my stop loss somewhere around here. I would have entered the street, and then that drop, it would have been a struggle for me because probably would have been a negative. It would have jumped up and then caused me to worry, is this going to keep going down or not? This would have been an entry opportunity for me. Yep, because you see what happened. Price came back and um, tested that high that it had before but eventually broke it but my stop loss would have been here anyway so i'm still in this street but worried that's okay i don't know if it's gonna keep going that but not a problem i see that creates i see that creates a low here and start turning back i'm not taking any other trade until i see a clear indication that price is gonna keep going down and then what what happened it kept trading sideways not worried that what happened price came eventually and broke that low that i created fantastic so what am i waiting for I'm waiting for price to drop and then come back into it and sure enough it came back into what broke above it <laughs> now this is not something i want to trade i'm looking for an opportunity to exit this market you know why because i think it might the low side may be may not be good for me that's what i'm thinking right now my thought process right now is like okay i think price is going to start misbehaving all of this up and down week here week here so i'm looking to leave the trade okay so i have that load anyway i have this low created because it's done that and then what would price do jumped all the way back into this place i'm out of the trade i'm out of the trade there's nothing to look for for now i was just sit on my hand and look for some opportunity to trade it because I'm not seeing good lows. It's just coming in into the previous lows, highs, and I'm, I don't like it. Yep. Created that. Broke that and created another low. I'm just watching it right now. So that's the beauty of trading one pair sometimes. You can watch the action unfold. So it, it came down and then went back up. I'm not bored. I'm not bored. I'm not trading it yet. I seen good opportunity. Okay, hold on. Come on. Oh, where is it? Is it my lines to be straight? So I start seeing good opportunity when price massively broke that with that uh, bearish and uh, bearish candle. Well, not engulfing, but uh, bearish strong candle. So I'm wa I'm watching it watching it that low was created fantastic then i have that in place can i find another entry opportunity i would say okay let's see this is good enough because it's about how many pips not too bad okay i think it's about 12 pips let me see oops oh. 12 pips is still it's a bit wide for me so I don't even have taken that. It's too wide for me. But anyway, I let it go. Let it go. 
let's see i need some good opportunity i don't want to gamble and yet i was right because price what did it do came all the way back up let it go let it go you can see <laughs> was a good decision to have left the market yep because what did you see price do it jumped all the way back up so now am i looking for entry opportunities for a buy yeah maybe so right now i have this low i know price is now at this low so meanwhile one other thing you can do when you're here you can also keep going um okay i don't think i need to go to the higher time frame because i don't know what's happening yet so i let that happen i look for an entry opportunity if i were to take this trade again if i was looking for a buy in this level now i will not look for a buy yet here why because this is a lot of indecision and a lot of um uncertainty i will look for a buy when i see price begin to break above this this zone you know I look for a buy so it broke above that um when it broke above that what am i waiting for i'm waiting to see uh a, a bullish engulfing can do uh, i'm not seeing anything like that yet um so i just let price keep to keep doing its thing oops sorry let it do its thing uh any bullish engulfing yes this would have been the bullish engulfing but then it would have um have hit my stop loss if i entered it so this would have been a lost trade if I entered on this candle, but it's not, it wasn't even strong enough. So let's let it go, let it go, let it go. Um, no bullish engulfing yet, let it go. No bullish engulfing yet, yep, my first bullish engulfing candle will be that one. So that will be my entry opportunity. This candle will be my entry opportunity. Remember, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I'm just taking this trade based on my strategy. The truth is this, if it doesn't play out, it doesn't mean that you took, made the wrong decision. In fact, you, you did what you're supposed to do as a trader, you followed your rules. It is just that the price market decided to do what it's supposed to do. Now, you looked for an entry here, you couldn't find any, you know? Some people would say, jump in on this candle, but there's no confirmation for you to get in. You never, you never would have known that this would have happened. So you just wait until you find a confirmation. Maybe you would have entered on this one and your stop loss probably would have been here because that's your previous low, somewhere around here. So, uh, come on, okay. And this to sell there. Okay, so maybe this would have been your stop loss. Then if that is the case, if you entered on this candle, then you probably will have still won this because this would have dropped and then probably didn't wouldn't have come to your stop loss, you know, and then jumped up. But I wouldn't have taken this, probably looked for another opportunity. This would have been my opportunity, bullish and golfing. And let's see what that what happened. I know that I still have this level here. This would be my TP level. I wouldn't want to take, allow it to um, go past this level without um, moving my stop loss into profit, you know, because it may come here, bounce off and then drop just like it did here bounce drop bounce drop bounce drop you know so that have my tp will be here this line that i have so let's move now let's see how what it says okay if i enter that where would be my stop loss unfortunately down here mm -hmm. okay so we're going what happened what happened so, you know price is moving Boom, TP didn't even come down to my stop loss. So that is my, I just take that profit and go or move my stop loss into profit somewhere around here, you know, and let's see what happens. So let's say I wanted to take, um, move my stop loss. I probably have my, my stuff here. Let's say this is my stop loss. I'm in profit now. How many pips? If I wanted to count pips, where did I enter from? I entered here. Um, I entered here, right? So, I have 45 pips. Not bad, not bad. So, I can protect my profit. You know, I could put it somewhere around here so I don't lose. Or maybe move it somewhere here. But either case, 
or you can just get out of the market altogether because it's it's at um, a key resistance zone. So let it go. Let's see what happens. Top, it's coming down. Yeah, see, that is why we could have taken that trade. Exactly what it did in the past. Came, drop, came up, drop, and same thing we thought it was gonna do. Come up and dropped, and then he definitely did that. So this would have been a win for me. Just get out and watch what price does. Then what am I looking for now? Another entry opportunity for a sell. Yep, could look for a sell here. Start looking for sales. That price created this is here. Um so created this. I hope this I have a problem. Okay, that's good. My mouse always messes me up sometimes. Okay, so yeah. So I'm waiting for either price to come back to this level, then I look for an entry, or come back to this level and look for an entry. So let's see what's happening. So price, sure enough, did it come back into that level? Nope, it didn't come back into the level, but rather, what did it do? Created another level. Yep, created another level. So it's fine. I don't have to enter a trade until I see a confirmation. So that level is gone. I let it go. Um, so I move with price. And what did it do? Came all the way in. Now I'm not even trading this. I just let it do its thing. You know, created that level. I shouldn't have let that come out. Created that level. You know, so if, okay. I put that okay let's say it made that level okay okay maybe i would have taken this trade why because it created that level jumped up didn't go here so i don't have an entry so i let it go but when it came down it broke that level and created another level and bounced i would have entered at this point with a drawdown of how many pips a drawdown of 14 pips. Yep, a drawdown of 14 pips. I stayed in. So I let it go because price came down, created a low, and then bounced off to my zone. Remember, zone, the previous low that it created. Then I entered the trade with a small pull, pull, uh, drawdown. And then what would price do? Start doing that move that it wants to do, trade into the side, and then boom, to the downside. Boom, wow, this is crazy. Didn't give me another opportunity to enter, but then it's still winning. I'm still winning. Let it go, let it go. Look for, ah, oh my God, where did it get to? Went back to that low it created. What am I looking for now? Maybe price is gonna bounce from this level again, just like it did in the previous chapter of this book that we're reading. And also came back to that level. I'm looking for an opportunity to buy. I take my profit. I'm out of the market. I don't want to sell anymore. I'm, I'm tired of selling. What am I looking for? Buys. Why? Because price did that here. So, but if it, but if that doesn't happen, what am I looking for? For price to break that level exactly and do, do what? Come back and retest it. Then I can look for a sell. So right now, I let it go. Yep. Your guess is as good as mine. Price bounced off that level just like it did. What am I looking for? A bullish engulfing candle. Do I find it? Yes, I do find it. But this is quite large. So I'm going to wait for a small pullback to see if I can keep buying to the upside. So that has been created. So it's done that. I'm looking for an entry right now. An entry I can find, maybe if I drop down to my smaller time frame, I can look for an opportunity to do that. Or I wait for a little pullback. You know, then I can buy. Remember, I have that level. This levels, this levels on this left that could serve as entry opportunities as well as exit opportunities. So I let price go. Uh, did I find any pullback? Yes, I did. Reduce the opportunity. Then I probably entered at this can do. Now I'm just entering because right now the opportunity has um, the drawdown has been reduced for me. Let's assume so this how many pips? Fifteen. So even though it comes down. So I'm taking this trade from here right now. So even though it comes down here, it's not so it's not the drawdown is not so massive. 
you know, but remember, you must have your stop loss somewhere around here, you know, just in case it comes way down. You know, so I I should have I could have entered on this on the close of this candle, but because this candle just looks so big, you know, so sometimes when it throws a large candle like this, it normally pulls back before it continues on the upside. You know what will I do? I will let for, I will let it pull back a bit. Yep, pull back a bit and reduce my drawdown, so I can now enter this at this candle. All of this I'm doing, I don't know what's happening on the right hand side, so I enter my trade at this point and put my stop loss somewhere around here yep that's my stop loss that's my entry right there so let's see what price is gonna do yep came down came down i'm not worried because it hasn't hit my stop <gasps> hit my stop loss and just hit my stop loss they're going up oh my god this thing is crazy isn't it just hit my stop loss and then bounced off well, isn't that crazy? Now, probably if it was when I just had traded, I'd probably be, I'd be go, go on my bed and start crying and start, um, you know. <laughs> but because I know that that's market, I wouldn't be bothered. I'll just let it go and look for another entry opportunity. Came down and hit my stop loss. But if I was smart enough, probably would have put my stop loss maybe 20 pips or 10 pips below the load and previous would have won the trade but not a problem i'm out of that trade i just look for another opportunity i move with it i move with the trend keep going what did it do <sighs> thank god i got out because i would have lost me a lot of money and then kept going now i messed up now because now i'm not doing the buys anymore you know i'm not doing the buys anymore i have to now look for an opportunity to sell so I, I have to reprogram my psychology now, my psychic now to psyche now to stop looking for buys and start looking for sales now because the market has changed. Remember, I was saying if it breaks below here, I'm going to start looking for sales. I was really looking for sell, for buy here. That's why, you know. But yeah, it didn't play out. So now I have to tune my head now to reprogram itself to look for sales. So now it created this low. Um, this low here. So now, what am I waiting for now? This was where I, I picked up as my stop loss, but uh, then price got there and bounced. So that would be an opportunity, a place for me to enter the trade if price gets back to it. So right now, I'm waiting for price to return. So what did price do? Ah, just kept going back, going down, and then kind of came close, gave an entry opportunity. How many pips draw down if before it got there? Oops, hold on, please. How many pips before it got there? Let's see that work out. Ah, not so bad. I jump in the trade. Yep, I jump in the trade. And what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for price to break below it. Yep, waiting for price to break below it. That would be another entry opportunity. Assuming I got this right. But if, you know, I have this, I'm in the trade already, but my stop loss would be, unfortunately, up here because that's the previous high. <laughs> but yeah, well, you have to follow the rules. Put your stop loss around here because you may decide, okay, let me put it somewhere close by here, but that's breaking the rules. Put your stop loss somewhere around here. That's the previous high. And then watch price do its thing. So let's see. I'm waiting for this to keep going down. Let's see if it does that. Uh, where are you now? Yup. No, it didn't. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Still trading. Hasn't hit my stop loss. Hasn't hit my stop loss. Still going. Still going up. It's coming. It's coming down. I'm still in it. Hasn't hit my stop loss yet. Ha <laughs> ha. Beautiful. You know, see that? see that move although oh, come on don't spoil this for me please see that move why doesn't it just stay yep pro below it now i'm excited see it broke below it so right now i'm feeling okay everything is going to be all right so i put my load there we're still in the game. But what would price do? It came 
dropped that low and then jumped massively up there. But if you look at it clearly, it kind of actually came back to the previous structure it created here. So still not a problem. There's no indication that it's still, it hasn't broken above here to keep buying. It's still within my trading zone. Remember, I have my stop loss somewhere around here. So I can still be selling this. So let's keep going. I'm still going. I'm still going. Nice. Broke this again. Oh, come on. Remember, where did I enter again? I remember now. Was it here? I think I entered somewhere on here. I can't remember, but I'm still in the trade anyway. So broke down again, came down, created another low here, but so tiny. Low nonetheless. Okay, so I wouldn't even be taking another position anyway because the 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 distance between here and my this position is too small. So. I don't, I'm not looking to take another position. I'm looking to at least take profit, get good profit out of it. You know, so, yep, right now I'm still here. Let's watch this move. Keep going. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Nice. What did you see? An opportunity. It broke down, and then what did it do? Came back to my level. What do you expect me to do? Jump in on another trade. That's another entry opportunity for me right there. And then what will I do? I create another low, another line. You know, create another line. What am I waiting for? For price to come to break that line, number one, and then to come back into it. Um, let me select you. Yes. So I'm waiting for price. I've taken my trade, I've taken my entry here. So I'm waiting for price to break it and then come back to it for me to take another entry. So let's keep going and see to see what's happening. No, it's going up. No. Okay. Okay. I lost that trade. Lost the trade. I lost everything. Let's say I was waiting for that to happen. I remember I had my stop loss here. So that trade is a losing trade. And because I never would have gotten out, probably would have believed this is going to keep going. You know, but then again, if I decide to follow my rule, I bring my stop loss into profit. Immediately, I'm 20 pips in profit. So let's assume I enter that trade, and I'm if I entered from here, right? I'm already 60 pips, so I would have brought my um, stop loss into profit. Then maybe I wouldn't have lost it anyway. So if I follow the rules to the letter, 20 pips in, I bring my stop loss in. You know, and then this would have kicked me out. So this is would have been. The only trade I probably will have lost would be this trade, this trade right here, because it came into it and I took that position. Then I will have lost this trade because what happened bounced up and went back into structure. So let's see what's still happening. So what's happening? Came down again. Remember what it did every time it came to that structure. Came, drop, came, drop, came, drop. So we're waiting for that. We're looking for that to happen here again. So it's happening, came to that level. Am I looking for an entry opportunity? Yes, I am. Where is it? I can't find anything right here. Yeah, this is not a bearish engulfing. This is a bearish engulfing. So if I'm going to take this trade, it's a risky one because it's quite close to this level, but I can try it, have my stop loss here. That's why I have my stop loss. And that's why I have, I, I always start with the 0 0.01 lot size or 0 0.02 depending on which account I'm using, you know, so 0 0.01 in the trade because that's a bearish engulfing can do. So I wait for it. I have my stop loss there that has been formed so I can draw my line again just to give myself an entry opportunity if price comes, breaks below that and comes back into it. So let's see how we're doing on time. Okay, one hour in. Um, Okay, what am I waiting for? For price to break below that and come back and retest? Did it? It's still trading. Yes, it did. Broke below that. Broke below that. So what am I waiting for? For it to come back into it? Did it come back into it? Yes, it did. Oh, come on, come on. It came back into it. So created a low. So I have my stuff. 
a line drawn. I have my position. I take another position here, 0 0.01 again. Oh, come on. So price came back into that zone. So I took another position. I had I had this this line here waiting for price to do what? To break it and come back into it. So what are we doing? Price broke it. Ooh, sweet. Yep. So let's see what's happening. Yes, created another low. Created another low. So that's my opportunity to look for another entry. So what did price do? Came back into this level. Yes, you guessed correctly. I'm taking another trade right now. So what am I waiting for for price to break this low? Remember, I already have one trade, two trades running that are winners. So as, let's see what's happening. Did it break it? Woohoo! Yes, it did. It broke that low. And but then so it's not so so great. It broke that low. Ah, uh, and then what did it do? Broke that low. Uh kind of straight in within that zone. Didn't really give me um really good low. So I let it go. I let it do its thing. Broke it. Um what's happening? Looks really looking for very good opportunities. Yeah, I had that. So I will have put that as a low as well. I would have taken that. Why? Because price came back into that zone. I took another entry. Let's see if I'm gonna win this trade. I let it go. I'm waiting for price to come down, break this, and come back into it. Did we get that? Nah. Oh, I did not do that. Did it? Then maybe I, I would have still been in this trade, but maybe this one would have been the challenge because it's it's now negative. But anyway, it keeps it's trading. Not yet in a loss yet. Still a winner. So I'm still in the the trade. Yep, another low created. I'm still in the trade. I'm still in the trade. Let's do this. Okay. So what am I waiting for? For price to break that low and come. Oh, then price gapped. That was, I think that was the next day. Price gapped. So now what am I waiting for? Price, I'm waiting for price to come back and fill this gap. Anyways, I probably would have been out of this trade anyway, because it probably would have been a weekend. So I'm out of it. When I'm out of this trade, so I'm, the next day I'm waiting for price to kind of close this gap before letting us know what it's going to do. If this is interesting, isn't it? Did it close the gap? Yes, it sure did went up then came in and closed the gap. Now I'm I'm looking for an entry opportunity in this trade. Now I can't just jump into this trade because it's a new day. I need to find an entry opportunity. So just all my levels are marked. So let's assume I want to continue from where I stopped. What am I looking for? Yeah, you guessed it. Price is coming. Pull back. Waiting for that drop. That's low hit to create that low. I don't want to spend a whole two hours doing this, <laughs> but it's kind of interesting when you see these things happen and they play out. So if, as you can see, we didn't win every trade, you know, you will not win every trade, but if you follow the strategy, you, you see, you realize that we won more trades than we lost, you know, so I do that, I let it go, I let it go. Is it going to come down? Is it going to come down? Uh, yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Dropped massively into that zone. And you know, when it came down there, you guessed it, I'm going to start looking for how to take my profit because it's in a key, um, key support area, you know? So I'm going to take my profit when it comes to this level, let it, let it break out of that level before I start looking for another sell opportunity or what am I going to be looking for now? A buy opportunity because it's at a um, key um, support level. So what am I looking for? What is, what, I'm sitting on my hands right now, just waiting to see what price is going to do. You know, price traded in that zone, traded in it, and then pulled out. So what am I looking for now? A bullish engulfing can do because right now I can see that this has gone above my previous low. So now I'm looking for a bullish engulfing can do. Can I find any? Um, not yet, not yet, not yet. Yep, that's one. But that seems like a large one. So what am I going to look for? I'm going to look for kind of pullback. 
kind of pullback. So I'm looking for a kind of pullback, a red candle of some sort, so that I can take a position. Did I find any? Yes. Okay. Need something lower. Okay, probably not too bad, but anyway, I can manage. If I decide to enter this, let's see, will I enter this trade? Mm, let's, let's say I take the chance and take this trade. Take the chance at this trade, just a minimum drawdown. My stop loss will be somewhere around here. Yep, somewhere around here, that's my previous low. So I take this entry, yep, so it's going up right now. It's going up. Let's see if it will continue going up. Remember where my TP would be exactly this area. Why? Because that's where price kept going to and falling. So that's my TP. This is my stop loss. So I'm looking for entry opportunities. I drew. Hold on one sec. Remember, whatever happens to the downside happens to the upside. I'm going to put this here too. Yep, so that if price comes to that level, I take another buy. This is the high it created. If it comes to that level, I take another buy. Remember for this one as well, I created a high. If it comes to that level, you take a buy. So right now I'm looking for buy. Yep, came to that level and I please put in another buy. I have this buy running and I put in another buy here. Okay, let me leave that. Um, then price came in and then bounced. Yep. My stop loss is still here, so I'm negative on both positions. But I'm not worried because my stop loss is down there. And then what would price do? Going, kept going, trading sideways, no clear indication of what it wants to do. Trading sideways, I'm fine because it's going up right now. I'm fine with it. I'm not looking for any other opportunities. I'm not putting in anything else because it's just sideways. No clear. Ooh, let's move. Okay, okay, I see you. Getting close to my TP. Boom! Yes. I'm out of the trade. This is my TP. I'm not looking for any other position anymore. Until price breaks above it or rejects it. Remember what happens in the past. If it goes to that level, it's coming down. So I'm not looking for any buys anymore unless price breaks above it, retest, and then goes up. Otherwise, I'm looking for sales right now based on price action. Every time price got to that level, it falls. So right now, I think I should just stop because it's already 12 minutes past uh, ending time. I don't want this video to be too long. So it broke above it. Yep, formed a bearish engulfing can do. Is that an opportunity to enter the move? Uh, maybe not yet because it's still in that zone. It could do two things. It could break above, it could break below. Let me see a clear break out of that zone. So that's a bearish engulfing telling me you can take the trade. It's a tempting, it's a tempting situation, but I may not, I may not, uh, may not take it yet. So let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. It's acting as if it's coming down. So, but I'm not going to really be worried. Just put in my levels and um, let it break it. Put in my levels and let me see price break those levels. Uh, come on, okay. Uh, my mouse has started acting up again. Okay, okay, ah, got, got it. Oh no, okay. Okay, so I have that. So what I want to see now is for price, I could even create one more line here. Yep, why? Because I can see some form of reaction around here. So what I want to see now is for price to break below this level. Then I can now see, look for another trading opportunity to sell this market. So what's happening? Price came down, you know? So if I had entered here, that would have been a good win for me now, wouldn't you agree? Yep, but uh, it's fine. I don't have to win every trade. Wait for it, wait for it. Am I seeing? Moving sideways, moving sideways, and there, that is where we are now with price. So if you follow this strategy right now, you know where you are, you know where price is at. What are you looking for now? You're waiting for this to break below here, and then you can ride it back down here. And then you can start looking for another entry to buy back up here. Yep. 
I'll buy or back up here. You've seen what price is doing. You see where where it got to. So you don't you don't necessarily have to, you know, jump in and stay for one week. You could jump in, take out, um, take out um fifty here, take out twenty there. Before you know, you have your hundred pips for the day. You know, and you see, as you notice, there are some of, there are some times that you're gonna lose the trades. But if you look at the number of wins that you have in one trade it would add um, weigh the number of losses. We had, I think, about three or there about losses in the journey we just took now. So, okay, that brings us to the end of this session. I'm going to stop the recording now. Then I would ask for questions.